So what do you stand for? What does your business stand for? Does anyone even know? Uh, and how do you even communicate this to people? I think is really the big question. Uh, and why does all of this matter? Well, all of that and a little bit more in today's show. So uh, let's get started. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Uh, shame, yeah. Ichno is really dying of the cold in Bloemfontein, uh, and I can already feel it here, but he says he's sending all the cold here this weekend with all his love. So uh, really looking forward, uh, not so much to that, but uh, good morning, good morning. Today is a beautiful day here in Joburg. I know down in Cape Town it's been raining. I'm not so sure what things are like over in KZN, but uh, I'm sure you anytime, Mark and the like, will let us know. So uh, good morning, good morning. Really awesome to have you here today. We're going to talk about values uh, and uh, specifically uh, business values or, you know, sort of are we communicating what we stand for and what is important to us? So i uh, really going to get a little bit into that. I've got quite a few opinions and views and things around this. i uh, done a lot of work on this. I really want to share my experience with you what I've seen, what I've learned, uh, and then also share the propulsion uh, values with you as well. But um, anyway, so with that, uh, there's a big giveaway today. So do stick with us when we get to the announcements. So we're going to give away something to five lucky people live here on the show. So uh, do stick around for that. Uh, excited for that one. It's always exciting when you can give things away for free live. Huh? Is there anything better than that? But uh, yeah, so let me not waffle on. I've got quite a lot that I want to say this morning. So uh, good morning, Mark. Awesome for you to say uh, hello, Kubis. Bonjour, uh, I think. Uh, yeah, bonjour. There you go. Uh, <laughs> uh, proper French from Paris. Thank you very much. Harry, good, good morning. I was thinking about you this morning. I wanted to ask you today how you are. So um, yeah, we'll, we'll check in with you later. Morning, Razan. Nice to see you. You missed last week, so welcome back. Renee, good morning. It's been a while. Uh, Yonita, good morning. Albert, good morning. Uh, I saw you all at the best practice huddle this week, so thank you for that. Shavane, good morning. My friend Mark, you and I need to have a serious catch-up after the summit. Uh, I'll chat to you. Then uh, Wayne, good morning. Always happy to see you, my friend. Uh, it was time for another breakfast. Mary, good morning. Nice to see you. Uh, Mark says it's overcast. Uh, morning, Ignatius. Like me at the scene. It was all pretty best practice huddle. And uh, Fantastic weather out in Paris. Not by race in the free state. Hey, this is proper Paris. So uh, good morning, Johan. Nice on your to see. It's been way too long, my friend. All right. So with that, let's head on over to David. He's here today with the current affairs. And then um, just, just look at his background, right? There's this amazing pirate ship, a Lego pirate ship. But uh, let's hear if the news belongs on that uh, pirate ship. Hello, hello everyone on this uh, Friday and good morning to everyone listening live and uh, good afternoon and good evening to everyone listening to the recordings. Um, so in today's current affairs is going to be quite FECA heavy. Um, they've been quite busy issuing directives. Uh, we're also going to be talking about globalization and the longest word in the English language. Um, so let's get into it. So the FECA has concluded an enforceable undertaking with the African National Congress Staff Provident Fund on how to meet its obligations to members. The fund is a defined contribution vehicle with approximately 535 members. The African National Congress, which is a participating employer in the fund, has not met its obligations in terms of making regular retirement fund contributions to the fund. The enforceable undertaking is an agreement which provides the authority with broad remedial powers aimed at rectifying a breach in the conduct of a regulated entity. The EU requires the fund to enforce an agreement reached with the employer to pay a sum of 10 million every month into the fund until the rear contributions are extinguished provide monthly contribution uh, confirmation to the fsca that the employer is not making any further deduction from employee salaries if they are paid report monthly to the fsca the status of real contributions and the employer's adherence to its obligations as per the agreement with the fund and to provide monthly updates to the members of the fund on the status of their rear contributions. FECA Commissioner uh, Unati Kamlana said the onus of ensuring that there are no rear contributions and to consider appropriate action 
is there are such areas remains on the trustees of the fund. Both employers and funds are reminders of the importance of treating their workers and members fairly by honoring their obligations as enshrined in the various legislation. So this notice just proves that nobody is above making sure that their employers are treated fairly when it comes to paying the provident fund contributions. Then the Financial Sector Conduct Authority has kicked off the 2022 edition of the Financial Literacy Speech Competition, which promotes financial literacy among school learners. The competition encourages the learners to research a selected topic, synthesize the information, research intelligibly, and present the findings in a five-minute speech. Topics range from financial planning, consumer protection, entrepreneurship, and engaging with financial services providers. Initially piloted with just 150 schools in Gauteng in 2016, this popular contest and skills development initiative has grown considerably into a national event with admiral impact on the lives of thousands of learners, their teachers, and families along the way. The competition hosted by the FSCA in partnership with the Financial Services Consumer Financial Education uh, Foundation targets grade 11 year learners from quintile one to three schools majoring in business studies, economics, and accounting. Learners start completing at classroom level with their respective schools and progress through to district and professional rounds until provincial winners represent the provinces at a national finals. Um, FBI has been involved with this competition since the beginning in 2016, and I can confirm that it is a fantastic competition and really does impact the lives of the learners who participate. Then for all FSPs out there, uh, the FECA has issued a request for information for certain financial institutions. In support of the FSCA's uh, objectives under the FSR Act to enhance and support efficiency and integrity of financial markets, protect financial consumers and support financial stability, as well as its obligations as a supervisory body in terms of Schedule 2 of the Financial Intelligence Centre Act, the FSCA plays an important role in reducing the risk of financial institutions engaging in contact that may contribute to financial crime. So essentially, the FSCA is looking to see who the beneficial owners are of financial institutions in order to meet their obligations uh, to the FATF committee. So uh, the following FSPs are excluded. Any banks, mutual banks and insurers licensed by the Prudential Authority. FSPs that are authorized for non-life insurance and health service benefits products only as they are not accountable institutions and sole proprietors and partnerships because they are owned and operated by individuals directly licensed by the FSCA. So all other FSPs, um, the portal is now open for you to go and log your information about beneficial ownership. And this must be done by no later by than 30 September. So it's a very important thing for FSPs to do. Then, as reported on MoneyWed, economists are warning that a reversal of globalization will keep inflation higher for longer as firms diversify their supply base to ensure reliable supplies of raw materials, in intermediate inputs, parts, consumables, and finished products for resales. The trend towards lying, relying on local suppliers quickly putting globalization on the list of things to worry about. The term was apparently point, coined by Dutch economists a Jedi Bacchus in 2015, after his research found that globalization and the reliance on global supply chains has started to decline after the financial crisis of 2008. Although this strategy helps countries secure supply, it will exacerbate high inflation in the short term because countries will no longer look for the cheapest supply of goods. So again, another inflationary pressure for us to worry about. Then the longest English word language, uh, or sorry, let me try that again. The longest word in the English language is 189,819 letters long. We won't spell it out yet, but the full name for the protein nickname tinin will take three and a half hours to say out aloud. Um, while this is by far the longest word in English, the longest word in the Oxford English Dictionary has 45 letters and the longest made up word just 28. Um, so if you've got three and a half hours to waste, you can go and look for the pro pronunciation on YouTube. Um, but with that, back to you in the studio, Bronto. Good stuff. Thank you, David. Uh, so next up, we have uh, Norma. 
And this morning, Norma is talking about how our businesses would be if we changed what we were thinking to and about ourselves. Uh, so this is a very interesting topic. Uh, and with that, Norma, here we go. Good morning. So my topic for today is how would, our how would the results in our businesses be different if we tell ourselves different things or if we believe different things or have different opinions about ourselves? So my results eventually become my business's results because I'm the business owner. I'm the one that drives the business. So our businesses suffer unnecessarily sometimes when we want to, you know, add or um, bring our worth into the equation, which is totally unnecessary, as you'll see today. So let's talk about it a little bit. Let me give you an example. Let me tell you how it impacts our businesses and also then what we can do to solve for that. So let's say we've got a business owner and he says that he doesn't like the results he's getting in his business at the moment. So then I'll ask him, OK, so what actions are you taking to get that result? And he'll say a list of actions. So then maybe ask what is the actions that you're not taking that you would like to be taking and they'll give a list of that and then the next question can be you know what is really the energy driving you while you're taking those actions so if i was in the room with you what would i see you doing what would the energy be like is it good or bad and you would say no it's bad i'm overwhelmed i'm i'm, I'm worried i'm stressed i doubt myself all the time i feel insecure so let's take one of those let's say why are you feeling worried so I might be worried because, um, you know, I'm behind in my goal, for instance. And then follow that up with another couple of why questions three to five times. And eventually comes down to, I just want to get to the goal so I know that I can do it. Or I know that what I'm doing is working. And really that is so unnecessary because we want to get to the goal to prove something. We want to get to the goal to prove to ourselves or to other people that we're worthy, that we're clever, that we can do it, that we're this amazing business owner. And it's very unnecessary. So everything that we do in our business is then driven from that place. So I've set the goal. I better get to that goal. Otherwise, I'm not going to be worthy or enough or valued or people's not going to be able to see my value. So of course, I'm going to be overwhelmed because I'm rushed to get there because I have something to prove versus just being in my business, setting goals for the sake of setting goals, setting goals to give my brain focus and attention, and also to make me grow as a business owner. So if I know I was worthy, what would I then be doing in my business? How would I be approaching that goal? So if, I, if my goal is, let's say, the end of the year, I have a number that I need to reach. When I get to the time um, of the goal and I'm not at the goal, I'm not going to make it a problem. I'm not going to make it mean that I'm not... A, worthy or good, or I don't know what I'm doing. I'm simply going to take that goal and I'm going to extend the timeline. So how can we then solve for this? So we know that we're worthy enough and valued as we are here. We don't need to prove it. We don't need to negotiate it. We don't even need to earn it. So we all know babies, when they're born, they're worthy and enough. And we all agree on that. But now ask that same question, maybe 30, 50, 70 years later, and people have a problem answering that question because they then want to tell you what they've done, what they've accomplished, what look at all the awards that I've accumulated throughout my life. But that's not really the thing that determines our worth. Our worth is sort, sort of innate. We don't have to prove it. We don't have to do stuff actually to get it. So three steps that we can follow to make sure that, you know, we come from a place where we believe we're worthy. And number one is simply to decide to believe it. So I'm making a declaration today that I'm worthy and enough and I'm valued and I have value to offer to the world and I don't need to prove it. I don't need to earn it. It's just there. Then secondly is to practice it every day. So if you have to set reminders on your phone, do that. Just remind you on a consistent basis, practice that I'm worthy and enough, and then I can feel it every day. And then lastly, then just to, from that place of worthiness, go and take action. So if I'm worthy, 
what is the actions that I'm going to take? It's not, not, not necessarily going to be different to the actions you've taken in the past, but the results you'll be getting would be so much more different than coming from a place of scarcity or worry or I'm not going to get to the goal and it's going to mean that I'm not clever or I'm not a good business owner. So my challenge to you today is to try this week, take the next five working days and all the activities that you've done, don't change any activities. All the activities that you've done throughout the last week or two weeks or month, go and do those activities from a different place. Go and take those activities from the place of I'm worthy and enough and see how the results will be different in your life. So that's what I have for you today. I'll be back next week. Have a good weekend. Thank you very much, Norm. I really love that. And uh, next up, Ichnu, and uh, changing your angle with Ichnu. And uh, today he's going to tell us about the day that his mother taught him to walk. Can't wait. Already has the <laughs> goosebumps. Haven't even started yet. Ichnu, I hope you're ready then, Cole Bloemfontein, because here we go. Good morning, everybody, and I hope you're doing well. And when Francho announced the topic, you probably thought, well, how can you remember when your mother taught you to walk? Well, I can remember how my mother taught me to walk because I saw how she taught herself to walk. So to bring you into this little story, I just want to share with you that it's Women's Month and I'm celebrating my mother, who was a wonderful, wonderful person. And uh, what I'd like to share with you was, you know, or is, is that, you know, all mothers love it when their children start to walk. I believe so because, I mean, this is the first time the child starts getting onto their own. And there's a sad bit because the child is becoming independent and the mother has carried him for nine months and now he's starting to walk away. And then it's pre-primary and school and it's a big boy and those kinds of things. In my instance, I think the first time that walking became distance and not only uh, moving away was when I went to the army. Now, some of you might have gone to the army and I'll never forget getting onto the train from Bethlehem to Bloemfontein, a full 250 kilometers and how, you know, how scary that was. But my mum was there and um, uh, this was moving away from her, but also realizing that I'm on my own, but not on my own and how she made sure that she breached that distance of 250 kilometers was with letters. Now, um, when you got letters in the army, you had to uh, you had to do push-ups for the letters. But my mum had a handwriting which was absolutely not a, a mother's handwriting. It was it was a scribbly kind of scroll. So I was she even in that she protected me from doing the push-ups because um, I never had to do push-ups for her letters. They must have thought it comes from some kind of typist. Uh, I don't know, uh, someone who did quick uh, speed writing and those kinds of things, shorthand, I think they called it. Anyway, so I got those letters and every letter she'd tell me about what was happening. But there was nothing in her life. She was a stay-at-home mom. So it would be, I've gone to the hairdresser and um, uh, dad's, the car didn't want to start this morning and my shoulder is still hurting and all those things happened. And so she saw me through the army. And then it was university again, and I moved to Bloemfontein. Mum was still in Bethlehem with my dad and the family. And I'll never forget uh, those, those holidays. I stayed with my brother in Bloemfontein, and then holidays I'd gone home. But there was one specific holiday. Some of, some of you might remember, you, we've all got days. You never remember, you never know that this is a day you're going to remember, but then it happens, and you remember it for the rest of your life. And I remember sitting in the car on the farm road and asking my dad why we were taking mum to the hospital for tests. And he said that the shoulder that always been hurting was, was cancer. And, and at this time, it was a horrible word. And, um, and all of a sudden, in an incident, uh, in, so quickly, uh, the roles reversed. I was now in Bloemfontein and mum had to come to National Hospital and I had to go and pick her up. And bring her to Bloemfontein. And I'll never forget the day when my sister and I mustered up the courage to speak to one of the doctors there and said, when will our mum walk again? And she said, she, she's never going to walk again. And 
you know, we're not a touchy, huggy kind of family, but uh, we love each other dearly. And I remember hugging my sister and the tears in both our eyes. And, and then the trips with the, with the chemotherapy and the radiation that my mom had to come through Bloemfontein to. And suddenly the same road which she had shortened when I was uh, in the army, I now had to shorten for her, taking her back to Bethlehem, her body being very sore. She felt nauseous. And I remember asking, Mom, let's see who sees Voliterskop first. But I'd say it just before the little hillock, and I knew Voliterskop would be, could be seen from the top of the hill. And she would then see it first. And I realized how the angle had changed, the roles had reversed. I was now playing the role of the parent, trying to make the road shorter for her. Anyway, uh, uh, she got home back to the farm, and I remember she couldn't walk. She could only read a little book, Faith for Daily Living, which she had every month. The church would have one of those little books, and she'd read that, and she'd lie in bed. And then for 20 minutes, she'd be able to come out in a wheelchair. And knowing she wouldn't walk again, we were very sad, but she never gave up. And then one evening, we're in the sitting room, and she calls us, and she says, come and pick me up. And she's got this walking frame in, in front of her. And, uh, and my brother and I walk over and you, you pick her up, but we're not sure what she wants to do because we know the doctor had told us that she couldn't walk. And then she takes a first step and another one and another one. Three steps. In those three steps, my mother reversed everything which I believe. I believe that you should listen to what people in high positions tell you. My mother taught me they should never listen to you. I thought that what you thought would be the truth, but you can expand your thoughts. And as Norma said earlier in her session, uh, I thought that in order to, to, to gain and, 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 and achieve goals, you had to be a person who is able to do it. Now, if you can set the goal, you can achieve it if you believe in yourself. I learned to walk into life when my mother learned to walk again. And I wish each of you Three steps into greatness over the next week. Thank you. If no, I'm going to make you give me warnings in advance in future. Uh, what an amazing analogy and, and real story. So thank you very much for, for that. All right. So with that, let's uh, get into the announcements and uh, the giveaway that we would want to do. So really looking forward to, to that one. First off, we uh, obviously want to talk about the summit. Uh, it is probably the thing that I'm most passionate about right this second to get this uh, going next, this coming Tuesday now. So time is running out, four days left today, and uh, you can still get your ticket at propulsionsummit.com. Uh, I'm not gonna go through the whole spiel, uh, but what I do wanna highlight for you is that it is being recorded. So it's a live session. We're presenting the summit live, but as it happens, it's also being recorded and then available on the same platform for 72 hours, where you can still go watch it, get your CPD, all of that. After that, it won't be available for a couple of days and then we'll put it onto Propulsion Learning, which is our online learning system. And uh, you'll be able to go and watch the sessions there and still earn your CPD as well if you missed it. So if you have a ticket, you can't make it on the day. Not a, not a reason not to get a ticket. Um, you know, get a ticket and uh, invest 390 Rand into the future of your practice and uh, your career. So uh, go and check it out, PropulsionSummit.com. And don't forget that there is uh, four verifiable CPD points up for grabs as well. If you attend and if you obviously complete the CPD activity, I have to put it in writing about like how we make sure you do that. But anyway, so, so that's the Propulsion Summit. So please go and check that out. Right. Then uh, the next thing is that uh, we did, as you know, last week Friday in the show, uh, very ceremoniously and uh, with a couple of tears, uh, launched TaxBase, uh, so which is the new online tool uh, of the tax tool that I've been sort of doing for the last five years. Uh, finally, it's made its transition from Excel into a proper online tool. The feedback has been phenomenal. Uh, the sign-up has been great. So thank you very, very much uh, for that. We really appreciate it. And uh, if you want to know more about it, you can go to the website, www.taxspace.app. But, but... 
to commemorate uh, and sort of celebrate, I guess, the launch of this tool. And also what's, I mean, there's still a lot we got to do with this. So it's only the core tool that's been launched thus far. But uh, we want to do a giveaway of five tickets to the summit. Sorry, let me just check. Uh, to the summit and uh, to enter, we're going to do a draw live. It's a lucky draw, right? Random. Uh, we're going to do it live. You're on the show uh, now. But what you need to do to enter is uh, enter hashtag tax space in the comments and then uh, comment that. Uh, let me bring it onto the screen and you can actually see um, what that would look like. So if you can put hashtag tax space in the comments and then you will automatically be entered into the draw and we will make do the draw uh, in, the, in the next few minutes. So please go and do that. Um, and then also um, with regards to, to this, if you already have a ticket, you can still enter because I'm happy for you to then give that ticket to someone else. So uh, even if we draw your name and you already have a ticket, uh, thank you very much, first of all, for buying that ticket early on. And then secondly, happy to, to give that to someone. So uh, while you do that, let me quickly talk a little bit about, um, let me talk a little bit about uh, Propulsion Pro just, just quickly. I just wanted to highlight the benefits of being a Propulsion Pro member, because as you know, the summit, you don't need to buy a ticket if you're a member, you get that. But there's quite a lot of benefits that people forget about for being part of the member of, of Propulsion Pro. Instead of, well, apart from being just part of the community and the camaraderie and being there for each other and, and really having a network and, and good relationships, um, I mean, that is really what it is about at the end of the day. And, and we saw that this week again in the best practice huddle as well. Uh, amazing, amazing to see everybody come together. So, uh, if you are forward thinking, you want to do things differently, you want to do it as best as you can, you want to get better every day, then definitely something to consider. But some additional benefits, uh, we have special rates, um, discounts, if you will, available on several, several different software like Comspace. Comspace has, a, has an offer. Profile Me has an offer. Uh, LifeDocs, uh, which we had Jeff on the show a few weeks back, uh, they have an offer. And then also uh, TaxSpace, you can also get discount on TaxSpace if you are a Propulsion Pro member. And uh, also, if you are uh, already a client of any of these systems, we give you a discount on your Propulsion Pro membership when you join. So um, either way, you're, you're getting a discount. So uh, so that's awesome. Uh, so that's it. And then also, you know, things like the Summit and the Global Financial Planning Conference, you get a ticket, it's part of your membership. You have access to the Speaker and Influencer Program. Uh, we do challenges. We have monthly CPD sessions. Uh, but they're exclusive to Propulsion Pro members. You won't see us do any more CPD sessions apart from the budget review open. The rest of all, everything we do is only for members. So um, the only other thing we do that's open, obviously, is this show, which we will never stop uh, as long as I can. <laughs> Let me just say that. But, um, but, but that's definitely something there. And then I think two of the, the, the biggest benefits from, apart from being, a, again, a part of this community and having a support base, is really the best practice huddle that we have every month also exclusive to members and then uh, because here we discuss all sorts of things and people get to share ideas and ask questions and help each other and share what they find is working and we tackle different things and you get all these various inputs and you're really able to solve problems right then and there so really awesome um, and then obviously the challenges that we run every now and then to help you implement whatever we teach um, as well because if you don't implement that doesn't really help Anyway, so propulsion.co.za forward slash pro. Alrighty, so let's see um, how many uh, how many invites. So, so we've got 11 entries. If you still want to get in, you can get in. But I'm about to do to do the draw, and um, let us do exactly that. Righty. So uh, if you are ready, so here we go with the first draw, and let's see who is getting a summer ticket. Da, 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 da. Wayne, my old friend. <laughs> Wayne, I can't remember if you bought a ticket or not, but uh, but uh, congratulations, uh, massively well done. Um, where is the right thing to play? There you go. So um, well done. If you already have a ticket, let me know you want to give it. To, otherwise, just I've got your details. I'll send you where you can go and book your ticket. Uh, so well done and uh, fantastic, fantastic. You can still get in. There we go with the next one. Uh, let's see um, if Wayne can win twice in a row. And 
Angel Mbata. Angel, uh, well done. I think you are actually a Propulsion Pro member now. So, um, yes, you do already have a, have a ticket, actually. So, um, yes, let's, uh, if you want to give this to someone, let me know who you want to give, give it to. Otherwise, uh, you know, happiness. Well done. Congratulations. Right. So, here we go. Once more. Let's see. Da, 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 da. Amanda, you also bought a ticket, <laughs> but now you can give this to somebody, maybe in the leaning circle. How awesome would that be? So uh, good stuff. Uh, fantastic, fantastic, uh, Amanda. And uh, here we go. The fourth one. Let's see. And we have Johan Blumeris. Fantastic, Johan. Bye-bye, now yes, uh, Bye-bye, and uh, righty, last one. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. And uh, who would be the last one? I mean, you had a pretty good chance, right? Five out of 12 is not a bad option or bad, bad sort of thing. Harry Nell, Harry, you're a Propulsion Pro member. So please let me know who you would like to give this to. And uh, I would gladly then uh, send the details to them. All righty, ladies and gents, that is it for all the festivities. I think it's about time that we uh, get into the actual show today. And today I want to talk about business values, how to communicate them effectively. So uh, let's see what I have to say. Alrighty. So yes, uh, business values, like where shall we start? Um, well, let me start off with sort of asking the question, like, what are values anyway, right? Um, I think uh, when we start talking about values, different people have different things. Well, the, the first thing I can tell you is what values are not, is it's not about what is right and what's wrong, because that's ethics, that's morals. So it's all about ethics. So that's a completely different discussion, and one which we'll probably have soon on the show. But uh, for now, if I talk about values, it's really what is important to you. And if I say what is important to you, that's a very hard thing to really determine, uh, to really think about, but what is truly and really important to me? And I'll get a little bit into what some of the challenges are just now. But one other thing that I've learned that is a fact, and some people say they do, some people say they don't, I absolutely believe that values change. Because as you go through life, certain things may become more important, and as life moves on, they become less important. So it depends. Just think about this when you're young, just out of school, you know, if you're a young man, probably a nice car and a nice hi-fi. I'm just stereotyping, so, so do excuse me. Um, so that's what may be very important to them, and all their money would go to those things, partying, you know, um, doing things with friends, having experiences, traveling the world, those kind of things. Then they mean the, the love of their life, Maybe they get married, maybe they have a family, whatever it is. But as that life progresses, those values change. What becomes important? I don't want to party anymore. I'm not, I'm not, it's not important to me to have, you know, the nicest car in my friends group. It, those things don't matter anymore. Suddenly, maybe my family is more important. Maybe my career is more important. Maybe, you know, money becomes very important to me. And those things change over time. So I don't believe that values are fixed. I don't think that values stay the same always. Um, maybe your top values won't change, uh, won't won't sort of be substituted by other values. Although unless you've got bad <laughs> sort of values that are not good for you, and and you decide to change them, but otherwise they do shift around in order of importance. And that for me is definitely something that was a, a big eye opener when I sort of start started thinking about that. Um, but that's that. But then there's this question for me around true values versus perceived values. And I know if perceived is really the right word, but what is really important to you versus what others think should be important to you? And often we let what others think should be important to us dictate what we say is important to us. And in fact, we try and align our lives with what, be it family, be it religion, be it Whatever it is, whoever sets that expectation around what should be important to you, it doesn't matter where it comes from, you, are, you, you try and align to that because it feels like that's the right thing to do. That is when you are a good person. That is when you do the right things for the right reasons, you know. 
And then you, you started over time getting burned out. You don't feel satisfied. You don't feel fulfilled. You feel frustrated and you don't understand why. You absolutely have no idea why this is. And then when you take a step back and you're really, really honest with yourself and you say, but what is really and truly, truly important to me? And you realize that, you know what? Money is the number one thing in my life. That is the most important thing. And then maybe work and then maybe my family. Whereas typically, you know, people would expect that family is always number one or religion is number one, family is number two, work is number three. I mean, that's typically what is being 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 discussed um, sort of everywhere. And it doesn't matter, like, that. it's all about what you believe and what you subscribe to. And, and that is, a, a, I think what I'm trying to get to is that it's a very, very personal thing. There isn't a right or a wrong, yeah? But you have to be honest with yourself about what is really important to you. If I do value, let's just say, money as number one, then that's fine. Unless that value makes me do things to get the money that are not so kosher, that now does not agree with my ethics and what is right and wrong. So a whole different discussion. But that's really what that is about. And um, I had a session uh, with, 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 with a team of mine last year. And one of the things that people are struggling with, you often find, let's just say, single parents. They don't have a choice, right? The children sort of has to be, like they spend a lot of time with children. Uh, a lot of time goes into that, uh, be it helping them with schoolwork, attending school functions, sport events, supporting them, whatever it may be. So they feel that they don't get time to spend time on the things that are really important to them. So then this one member of my team said, but what she does is, or what she's now doing, is she's actually involving her children in the things that's really important to her. So what is important to her, for example, is to create. She's very creative, arty, et cetera. So that's what she wants to do. But now she involves her children. So she still gets to spend time with the children. Children gets to spend time with her but doing the things that's important to her and they get exposure to that. And then also, she also takes time to spend time with them with things that are probably important to them. And uh, so, so there are ways and means around these things. It's not to say that well, this is my life and, you know, I can't spend time. I have to put myself second and third. It's fine. A lot of people do that, especially if your love language is, you know, sort of service. If you want to help others, then uh, you don't mind doing that. But that is not always uh, for everyone. So being very, very honest with yourself is probably the hardest thing um, for that. And uh, I can tell you this, like the day that you are very honest with yourself and that you realize like this is very important to me and this is where it fits, then there's sort of a feeling of fulfillment that you start feeling. There's a feeling of gratitude um, and, and almost this, this awakening that happens. And, uh, you know, then... I think the, 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 the next step would be that you've got to communicate this now with the people around you. So I'm getting to the business part. Like you might be thinking about, you said you're going to talk about business values. I'm getting there. But you've got to ex have a conversation around, like with your spouse. This is what's very important to me. With your children, what is very important to me. Um, and the biggest thing that you'll find is like, as you start communicating this, you know, it's easy to say, what your values are but people don't always understand they don't always get it so probably the question that's lingering in their mind is why why are those things number one number two number three number four whatever it may be then to have that conversation and explain because if you do it brings that understanding it they suddenly your decisions make sense your actions make sense your focus your drive whatever it may be uh, makes a lot of sense to them and they understand. And also, I mean, there's always this thing about compromise in any kind of relationship, whether it's with a client or with your spouse or your children or whoever it may be. Um, but if there's understanding, compromise is so much easier uh, from that point. The other biggest thing is that if you communicate this effectively, right? Uh, and with this, like the only way to communicate anything effectively is to have a conversation and to answer the why question, in my opinion, but you attract the right people into your life because people whose values don't align with yours will just leave by themselves, right? Clients will leave by themselves because they don't like what you stand for. They don't like what you're doing or anything like that. And that's fine because the right people will stay and the right people will join. 
which is very, very important in any business, any relationship, anything like that. I think an important part of communicating your values, if you really want to do it effectively, Simon Sinek said, you've got to communicate your values as a verb. So it's not the what, it's actually something that you're doing. If I can sort of translate um, what he was saying. It's about, it's something you do. It's not something that you put on a poster against your wall to say, wow, these are our values. This is so amazing. Or these are my values. Um, so definitely something very, very different. It's about how you operate. It's, it's sort of what guides you. Um, that is really what is um, what values are. It's if they are important, they make decisions so much easier. It is how you behave. It's the actions you take. It's the decisions. Everything is linked uh, to that. All right. So then, obviously, let's get to personal values versus business values. And um, for me, everything starts in life. And, and Norma actually has spoken about this over the last two or three weeks, that whatever we do, it starts with me. The biggest thing that I think I learned in the last few years is that I cannot change what you do. I cannot change what my spouse does. You know, we always complain like, oh, if only she does this, then I would do this. If only that one did that, then, then I would do this. But you can't make anybody do anything. And in fact, they're doing exactly the same thing. Uh, if Francois only does this, then I will do this. And you got to make a decision that I can only control what I do. I can change. I make the decision. Nobody can make me change unless I want to, right? So that's where all of this starts. So the same with values. You've got to understand your personal values. Then you've got to understand, like as a collective for your family, for example, what are your values as a family? And those won't necessarily be the same. And again, then from there you go, oh, I'm starting a business. I have a business. I have a practice. I have a team. What, is our, what are our values for the business? Now, your personal values and your business values won't be word for word the same. But I can promise you this, that the only way it will work is if they are aligned. And again, I've seen this before in different places, right? You read the business's values. You get excited. You're like, this is my place. Yeah, I'm going to fit in. I will belong here. But then what you experience is something very, very different. And that's why it's so important to say, well, values isn't something that you put on a website or on a poster against your wall or on your screen or your phone or wherever you keep them. It is something you do. You must see a business's values. You must see a person's values. That is the most important thing. And look, I don't always get it right, like far from it, in fact. But there are stuff that I stand for. There are stuff that I believe in strongly, right? Um, and particularly, I want to share with you propulsions values, like in our business, like what are the things that we value to give you some form of an idea? If you don't know where to start with your values, I think I shared this in a previous episode, um, you can use De Martini's, Dr. De Martini's values determination tool. It's completely free. It's the best one that I've used because there are, I don't know, a gazillion of these things. What I like about his, it's a very open thing. It's not giving you stuff that you need to select. It's asking questions. So it's getting you to delve deeper. And then when they do that, you need to do certain things. And then you sort of whittle it down until you say, oh, Here's my values. And suddenly a lot of things are going to make sense to you. Um, so, so do go and check that out. It's just, you can just go and Google De Martini values the determination. Uh, it's free, like no catches, no nothing. So uh, you can go and do that, right? So with that, let me share with you um, the propulsion values. Um, now this has been shaped over many years, trust me, like since 2015 that we started, I really spent a lot of time 2015, 2016 to get to know myself, really figure out what I want to do, what I'm supposed to do, what do I really like, what don't I like, who I am, why I do certain things, why I don't do certain things, why certain things motivate me, why certain things don't motivate me. So it's been a freaking long process. Um, and I'm not there because like I constantly ask myself questions, but it did culminate in values that we've shaped and changed over time to figure out, no, this is really important to us. This is not things that we thought were important were not really important, but this is really, really important. So, uh, so let me share that um, with you. So the first one is we keep our word, right? And what this is about for me and for us is 
We want to under promise and over deliver always. It's something I learned when I started in the, in the business or in the profession for that matter. Always under promise, over deliver. Uh, we don't forget. We do not ignore. A lot of people ask me sometimes, like, I can't like, believe you remember, yeah, but I do write it down. I just don't always get to it as quickly as I want to. But we keep to our word. If we say we'll do something, we'll do something. Uh, even if it takes me too long, we will still, we will still um, do that. So that's the first value. Um, and then we always put people before profits. Um, this is extremely important to me. Um, the decisions we make is based on, you know, I feel like I don't have a business if I don't have clients. Now, it doesn't mean like the client is always kink or sometimes the client can be wrong. But the way that we interact, the way that we engage, the way that we make decisions and, and look at things really so like, look, I deeply care about you and your business, right? That's why we're here. We want you to grow. We want you to thrive. Um, but we always want to put you first before any profit, any money decisions. Um, those things don't even come into the equation. It's about what is the right decision in this particular circumstance for, for our clients, our partners, uh, et cetera. Um, then everything we do, let me just double check if I didn't skip a slide. Uh, there we go. We do everything world class, which is something that I've always been, been sort of into. And does it mean it's perfect? Far from it. Uh, but are we getting better and better and do things look better and better and do we deliver things in a more professional manner? Absolutely. And we'll never stop. Um, but we don't think small. We don't act small. And I think the summit is is a good example of that. We think global. We create global. We deliver global. So so we, 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 we stop thinking just, uh, we just, yeah, there's actually a whole universe out there that we can serve. So um, that is important to us. But very most important maybe to me, and I always say to people when I talk to them, like, I'm so worried that this is one day, um, you know, that, that this won't be the case. And I'm so weary of it. Um, so we remain humble. doesn't matter. We can achieve at the top level. We won't boast about it. We're not going to tell anyone about it. We're not going to, to, to let it go to our heads. We will always remember where we come from. Um, most important, probably. Then another thing, we never, we never stop learning. Luckily, I'm a very curious person by nature, so we never stop learning. Um, so my team knows as well. Got to stay curious. Got to think that something's interesting, even if you know it already. Like always, like this is cool. This is nice. Interesting. Um, we want to ask questions. We want to understand. Um, we want to listen. We want to grow and want to share um, everything that we do learn. So um, that, is, that is definitely uh, very important to us. Then a big thing for me, and you always see like, yeah, I do cry sometimes on the show, but also we have fun and I laugh and it's always time for a joke. Um, so we don't want to do boring work. We only want to do work that we care about that's fun um, and uh, that really makes a difference. And uh, yeah, we want to laugh every day and we want to create every day. If there's something you want to do to really get you going and to really sort of up your spirit, create something. It is amazing. Even if you just draw a little stick man on a piece of paper, um, do that and then we lead and inspire through action um, this is something i think that i've always prided myself on uh, we are self-starters i don't need to wait for someone um, i'll go figure it out we'll go and research and do whatever needs to be done um, a case in point our learning system broke because they made changes the old one and uh, suddenly we can't show people's id numbers on the thing I went, couldn't find somebody to do the development for me because it's too small. Nobody's interested. I figured it out, changed it. We made it a, a short-term fix. So we'll see if we can get a permanent one. But don't wait for no one. Go and do what you need to do. Uh, we see our plans and our commitments through to the end. I think that's the biggest thing, the action. we got to take action. I've spoken about this before on the show as well. Action is extremely important. Um, nothing happens if we don't take action. So, yeah. We want to show others the way, we want to figure things out, and we want to move with, with urgency, uh, but with long-term patience. So uh, that's definitely important. Then the last one is that, and this, hopefully you know this, that we embrace technology in everything we do. I love technology since I was wee, wee little, um, <laughs> you know, a, a wee lad, how did I say? Um, it's always been something... Um, it brings a lot of good. It makes a lot of things possible. It's only a tool. It's only an enabler. It doesn't replace anyone. It doesn't replace anything. It just makes things better. 
So um, that's how we see it. And we want to encourage clients and partners and members to do, to do exactly uh, the same. So uh, those are our values. I'm quite keen to sort of uh, learn about yours. And um, so, yeah, let me, uh, I'll look at the comments now in the closing. But uh, that's it for, for this part. Alrighty, so um, let's just see quickly. Uh, cool stuff. Obviously, there was a lot of comments and things with the uh, with the lucky draw. Um, so, Shamayan uh, alignments of values creates congruency. Oh, yeah, that that is such a word that Dr. De Martini actually uses. I think congruency. It shows authenticity and brings unity to teams. I'm passionate about it. Absolutely. Um, thanks for that. Uh, Angel says, I experienced this firsthand from you and the propulsion team. Thank you very much, Angel. Um, and then we've got Amanda. That's a big thing in the business coaching uh, we do with advisors and their client engagement. It's more important to be interested in your clients, not trying to be interesting. Yes, uh, which is a concept from, you know, um, what is it called? Uh, I don't know, making friends and influencing people or something, Dale Carnegie. Cool beans, righty. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for being here today. I really, really appreciate it. We'll be back next week, same time, same place. And uh, I hope to see you on Tuesday at the summit. Go get that ticket, propulsionsummer.com. Uh, stay safe, be blessed and prosper, and continue to raise the bar. Bye-bye.